I, female 34, met my male 33, husband online, and got married six years ago. I moved from my home country to live with him in Japan since then. He is Japanese and has a stable job there, while I am a freelance illustrator, so I am okay to move here. Every day I use English with him. Maybe you notice already, but English is not my first language, so it is not perfect, and neither is my husband's English. But at least we can communicate. I tried my best to learn Japanese to be able to communicate with his friends and family, but Japanese is not an easy language. I have to learn how to read kanji, hiragana, and katakana from zero by myself. During the infection 19 lockdown in 2020, we got money from the government and he bought me some books and dictionaries, telling me to learn the language more intensively during the lockdown. He didn't teach me anything though. He said, since I could speak four languages, adding one more language should be easy for me. I tried, but it is never good enough for him. He always said my grammar sucks, but I do always have problems with grammar. As you can see, my English grammar sucks too. He said I should be able to speak like a native at this point. So last year, in the summer of 2022, I decided that I would get a part-time job at a restaurant so that I could practice more of my Japanese. To my surprise, the staff there liked me and they could understand my Japanese. I also now could read and write several kanjis. I could write my own address with kanjis and read menus. Last week, we had a family dinner with his family. During the dinner, I made some grammar mistakes, which were not actually quite bad because everybody still understood what I was trying to say. But my husband said in front of my family that I was stupid for not understanding the correct grammar. It makes me upset because he said it in front of everyone. So I said in English, your English is not better than mine and you can't speak my language. Why do you call me stupid? He was so pissed off and won't talk to me since that day. Am I the idiot? Edit. He is not a bad guy. I love him so much. Just he is very outspoken. If he disliked something, he would say it right away. He never comments about my body or looks, but he is very sensitive about my skill. He often criticized my art style and other skills. He said, I am lazy. There is no excuse not to master the language since I have been living here for almost six years already. Maybe this is me trying to defend myself but last year I got my N3 JLPT, Japan Language Proficiency Test, Level 3 certification. He said it must be out of luck because my Japanese is very rough. And he said I should have gotten Level 1 already because I have been here for so long. Now for a few important comments. Commenter. Not the idiot. Your husband is an a-hole though for sure. Even if you understand multiple languages, it doesn't mean learning another is any easier. He definitely should have helped you too. I think what hindered you overall is not practicing. From the sound of it, once you got that part-time and were forced to speak more, your Japanese improved. So honestly, he should have spoken more Japanese at home. Also curious if he's making any effort to speak your native tongue. He said he doesn't need to learn my native language because we don't live there. My parents don't speak English and Japanese, so I beg him to at least try to communicate with my family. But he said his brain has no capacity for that. Not the idiot. This guy must be incredible in some way for you to put up with this disrespect and rudeness, but I can't imagine what it is. Maybe I am naive, but he was my first love. I love him so much. He is kind sometimes, just he is just brutally honest and unforgiving when speaking his mind. Just right now I'm actually crying because he's still not talking to me and tomorrow is my birthday. More info. I am full Asian and sometimes mistaken as Japanese. But aside from my husband, everybody never really complained about my Japanese. Just when I moved to Japan, they got confused a little if I phrased something wrong. You do speak Japanese though, especially since people say they understand you. He always says my Japanese sounds weird whenever I try to communicate in Japanese with him and told me never to use Japanese unless it is perfect. So I have no confidence at all. I waited until the fifth year of living in Japan to find a part-time job because he said with my weird Japanese, I would not be able to work here. He is very straightforward. He would speak his mind even if it upsets me. I noticed since I started working, the staff and the people who come to the restaurant are really kind to me about my Japanese ability and never complain about it. 
The manager even wants me to be a full-time employee there and he always gives me bonuses every month for my hard work. But if I told my husband, he would say that just because most Japanese don't speak their mind, deep inside they think your Japanese sucks. OP is voted not the idiot. Now for the six month update, my original post, slash of it.com slash slash r slash cole slash reddit.com slash slash me ESNO. So we got divorced. I think about it more and more, and I feel like these six years have been hell for me. I am tired of keep on finding any reason to think that he is good for me. I found a full time job in a Japanese company and started working there from last January. Everybody in my new company said I speak Japanese well, and so far, I am doing great. I rent my own apartment and surviving on my own just fine in Tokyo, albeit my ex-husband saying that I would never be able to survive in Japan without him. I have a crush on another guy, but I take it slowly. Thank you for all of your comments to me. I am glad I posted here. Edit. I use only Japanese in the company I work now and earn almost the same amount as my ex-husband despite just working here for four months. My crush now speaks only Japanese and we communicate just fine. I am confident now. Another long edit because I am surprised that I got so many responses. Thank you so much for the comments and support. Just to clarify, of course, the reason for my divorce is not only because of the language thing. I kept saying my ex was a good person and I still think that he is a good person, but he is not treating me right. There were a lot of things he had done to me that had harmed me physically and mentally. Before I was with him, I was also doing modeling as a side job. I took good care of myself, but after I married him, he said that my look didn't matter and he disliked me dressing up or putting on makeup because he thought as a married woman, I should not attract other men. I did what he wanted and I kept telling myself, oh, this man loves me the way I am, no matter how I look. But then I found out he was following sexy girls on Instagram and Twitter. He never chatted with them, so I let it slide, but I kept thinking about it, especially since he never said anything positive about my look. Basically, he never said anything positive about my effort except for my cooking. I started to feel unconfident. I got depressed and had to take antidepressants, then I gained 20 kilos in six years. When I said he never said anything positive about my look slash effort, it didn't mean that he always said bad things about me, just he seems to be indifferent about it. Now, after we got divorced, I don't have to take my antidepressant anymore, and I lost 15 kilgs already. I started to talk to some guys until I met my crush right now. I was surprised because my crush now always said that I look good and nice. He noticed when I changed my hairstyle or nail, saying I smell nice and compliment me when I do good thing at work. My crush works in the same company with me. The other people also said that I look super good now and I look so much happier. I wanna show you my pictures so you can see the difference between when I was single, married, and became single again. But I know there is a chance some of you might recognize me and then would recognize who is my ex-husband and it would cause problem for him. Anyway, how I learn Japanese and other languages is by listening to some song, movies, or other people. Then when I can't understand some word phrase, I would find it in dictionary based on how I hear it. Then I have to guess how it is written so I can find the word in dictionary translator. I prefer dictionary to translator though, because when I open dictionary, I will see many other words other than the one I am looking for and I may remember those words I accidentally find too. After I find the word and understand what it means, I will try to make a sentence with that word and use it in real conversation. Now, I can already read Japanese's comic book and watch the movie in cinema without much difficulty. Once again, thank you for your support. Please wish me luck for my career and my life ahead. Also for my crush, hope it ends well. I also wish all the best for all of you. May you learn something from my experience and may it be useful for you, or at least it could give you good feeling when you read this update. Cheers. Now for a few comments. I speak English, Indonesian, Chinese, Germany, and Malay. Now also Japanese and currently learning Spanish. Sugoi, ganbarimashita ne. Watashi mo nangaku ni nihon ni sunde iru no ni bunpo o ra juubun to omoimasu. Atarashii seikatsu o ganbatte kudasai.
Even though I have lived in Japan for a long time, I often make grammar mistakes. Good luck in your works. Thank you very much. It's almost like I've been reborn. I've been really happy lately. So my mental health has improved. Now for the five month update. So it has been few months. The result of a Japanese language proficiency test I took has been announced. I passed the level two with only two mistakes. The highest is level one from five level and I passed the level two, so I am proud of myself. My crush confessed to me and we are dating now. He is a Japanese who doesn't speak English at all and he said my Japanese is perfectly fine. I met his parents and brothers last month during Obon holiday. He brought me to his hometown in a rural Japanese village. His family welcomed me. His family lives in a farm. They never went overseas at all and doesn't speak English but they welcome me nicely. I am a divorcee and six years older than my BF, but they don't mind at all. The fact that I am a foreigner also doesn't bother them. I just got promotion at work this month, which is quite rare since I have been here just for 10 months, but they said I did my best, so I deserved it. I plan to move in with my BF next winter. He treats me with nothing but respect. He always seems to be proud with anything that I did. He even said my Japanese accent is cute. He never scold me in public like my ex. I told him, why are you so nice? He said, it is just normal behavior to someone you care about, which makes me realize how much of a jerk my ex-husband was. About my ex-husband, he stalked my Instagram and found my post with my new BF, and he threatened my BF, but my BF just blocked him. My ex's cousin, who is really close to me, told me that my ex posted his breakup text with his new GF on the Twitter and sent the screenshot to me. I read it and I feel pity for whoever girl who gonna be with him next because he will never change. I feel healthier, prettier, and definitely happier now than ever. I don't know what will become of my new relationship, but I learned a lot. I will never let anyone disrespect me and my effort. Last but not least, thank you all for all the comments you leave to me. It definitely helped me to clear my mind. Cheers for you all. Am I the idiot? for being blindsided by my sister after my parents lied about their eating habits. For context, I live with my fiance in a different country than my family. I haven't seen them in over a year because, so my parents, female 61 and male 63, offered to visit me and I was beyond happy. They have very humble beginnings in a third world country and this was their first time making an international trip. So I tried to make sure everything was perfect and as smooth as possible. They came and spent about a month in our house. They had their own bed, their own bathroom. I arranged for all their necessities. And even though we're not rich, my fiance and I tried to provide them with everything so they wouldn't have to spend their money here, where the currency is 5X their own. About our eating habits. My fiance and I have different schedules, different diets, etc., so we don't eat together. Whenever one of us is hungry, we go to the kitchen and make ourselves a plate of food. We work from home. I explained this to my parents, and I also said, the kitchen is yours. Grab whatever you want and cook whenever you want. As time went on, we noticed my parents weren't eating much, so I asked them what they wanted from the grocery store so I could buy it for them. They said everything was fine, that they were indeed eating while I was working. My mom is naturally peckish, so I thought that was just how she ate. I haven't lived with my parents in over 10 years, so I wouldn't know for sure. In any case, my fiance brought my dad to the grocery store with him and told my dad, grab whatever you want. And he only grabbed a few items. Anyway, this went on for pretty much the whole month. And every time I asked, they said it was all fine. At some point, I started taking them out for dinner every day after work which quite literally broke the bank, but at least I could see them eating. They left a few days ago, saying they loved their stay and that they had a blast. So to my surprise, my sister, female 40, called me today ripping me a new jerk, saying that my parents told her that they had no food to eat, that there was food in the fridge that they couldn't eat because it belonged to us, and that they had to keep making trips to the convenience store to buy food for themselves, and that they spent a lot of money. I couldn't believe my ears. I'm feeling totally blindsided by this. 
I thought they knew how to cook their own food and if there was something missing that they would have told me to buy. I took their word for it when they said everything was fine and that they were eating. My sister says I should have been more attentive to their needs and that I acted like I didn't give a frick. So now I'm feeling bad, thinking my parents were miserable and starving the whole time, while I thought they were fine. I don't want to bring this up to my fiancé. He will be devastated. He was genuinely trying the best he could to make my parents happy. Am I the jerk? What more could I have done? My head is spinning right now, so sorry for the long text. Now for some of the comments. Commenter, did you see them go to the grocery store? Thanks for reading this. Yes, the thing is my dad smokes, so I just thought he wanted to buy cigarettes. There's also a park nearby that my mom claimed she liked to go for walks, so I just assumed that's what they were doing. I think you need to talk to them ASAP. Say exactly what your sister said and ask why. Tell them you asked them many times. I tried, but nobody answered my calls. So yeah, feels like a very shitty place to be right now. Info, so you all never had a cooked meal together at home in a month? Yes, we did have cooked meals together a few times, mostly on weekends when I had time to make something more elaborate. The biggest issue was during work days when there wasn't much time for me to cook, especially lunch. This popped in my head because you say your parents are from another country. Is the food in your home drastically different? Is cookware different? The pots, pans, the oven, whatever? No, not at all. It's pretty similar, and they did know how to use my range, microwave, and I even taught them how to use the air fryer. Did you ask them if they were eating? I did ask. They would guarantee me that they ate XYZ, sandwich, eggs, pasta, and then said they cleaned the kitchen before I could see it. I don't believe we are from the same culture, as the commenter, based on some of your replies. If they weren't on the same page as me, then it's not cultural. Where I am from, family is family, and you can be yourself. There's no such thing as etiquette amongst parents and children. I mentioned I felt blindsided by my sister's call because I did feel everything was fine, and they reassured me it was so. No, I don't know why they preferred junk food over the groceries in the fridge and pantry. Then another commenter said this was the most helpful comment. Comment. My in-laws are like this. When they come to visit, they are so out of sorts that even though we take them to the store and everything is the same, cooking in our kitchen is complicated and they can't do it. They get sick from the air here. They are hungry but don't want to be a bother or mess with anything. The water is different and upsets their stomach, etc., etc., etc. My husband would beat himself up, then would bend over backward, and now they are just at a breaking point because there are cultural barriers and age-related barriers we can't seem to get through that have only increased with age. His sisters will call us when they are here and tell us the same things. We can take them to the store to get the exact coffee they drink at home, and they will say, no, they like ours. Then call his sisters and say, they are getting sick because of our coffee. This may be a challenge because they are so uncomfortable outside of their norm whether it is out of the country, out of their home, or their environment, that they lose the capacity to be self-sufficient. You should try and talk with them, but keep in mind they may have some barriers and walls built that they need to realize or can't realize, especially if they are older and have not left their comfort zone most of their life. OMG, thank you so much for this insight. I think you're absolutely correct. My dad has the terrible habit of complaining about everything. We took them to see literally one of the seven wonders of the world, paid for a huge Airbnb, and his first comment was, oh, the clock on the wall is broken. I feel like there's nothing that I could do that would be enough. He'll always have something bad to say. Yeah, your comment helped me make sense of this situation, so thanks again. OP is voted not the idiot. Now for the update. Thank you so much for all the replies. I appreciate all insights. It was kind of funny to see how invested some of you got over my family drama lol, so that made me feel less down. I got a hold of my mom, who is the most level-headed family member, and asked her what they said that caused my sister to have such a strong reaction. Some of you were correct, 
my sister did blow this out of proportion. But also my parents, particularly my dad, have a strong feeling of inadequacy, which I knew of but never thought I would become the focus of it. Essentially, she said my dad felt like he didn't deserve any of the things we were doing for them, hence why he chose junk food over the quality food we provided. My dad has some self-hatred that was present my whole life. He is very overweight, he smokes, and he's also a functional alcoholic. My partner and I are fitness-oriented people, so we paid for a monthly gym subscription for both of them so we could all go together. They both said they wanted it, but my dad went only a few times. I did notice he was smoking a lot more than I remember, and he was also buying beers every week. But I guess it was his way of coping with whatever feelings were triggered by his first international trip. Apparently, he never thought he would go anywhere. My sister heard all of this and thought that I did something that made my dad feel this way, that I mistreated him or that I somehow caused this. I don't know. None of this is true. I was super happy to have my parents here, and I'm not ashamed of them whatsoever. I was proud to introduce my family to my American friends, and everyone went above and beyond to make them feel welcomed. I did everything I could possibly think of. I'm not rich, but I'm prudent with my money, so I do have a comfortable life. This doesn't mean I can stop working tomorrow. I'm not a millionaire, but the issue is not with me, it's with how my parents feel inside. It's almost like I'm being punished for leaving poverty behind and somehow they chose to distance themselves like I'm an outsider. So it wasn't about the food. It was about my dad and his extreme inferiority complex that stopped him from enjoying his time and connecting with me, my partner, in my house and my new reality. My mom did apologize on behalf of my sister, said she planned on talking to me and regretted that she didn't because of how my sister brought this issue to me. I don't know how to digest all of this, but yeah, I guess I have some therapy sessions ahead of me. Thanks for reading. Thank Am I the idiot for taking legal action against my girlfriend after she gave away my deceased father's Pokemon cards? We are both in our early 20s and have been together for three years. It has been two months since we moved in together. When I was a teenager, I was obsessed with collecting Pokemon cards. I had over 5,000 cards in my collection. A lot of them are very crappy, worth 0.5 C to $3, but some are worth up to $250. Personally, I never intended to sell them, or at least not in the near future. My girlfriend gave away my entire collection to her cousin one month ago without asking me, since he asked her if he could have them when he visited us. She gave them away, believing that since I'm an adult now, I won't need them. As I was cleaning my room a few hours ago, I realized my collection box was missing and I went crazy looking for it. An hour later, she came home after running some errands and told me what she did. I told her to get all of them back and she has refused because it would be humiliating for her. What should I do? I have a recording of her confessing to it so I can easily get compensated for it in court, but I'm assuming that will effectively end the relationship. Though I love her a lot, I believe I would rather have my cards. It doesn't seem right to sue her for this, but I don't know how I can recover my collection. If there is a less aggressive way to handle this, please let me know. Advice? Now for a few important comments. OP added, she gave them all away for $10. Commenter asked, do you have an estimate or the total value? OP replied, 55.5K in today's value. Another commenter said, I'd agree this is a deal breaker. What in butt? She's more concerned with her ego than fixing her mistake. Yes, I saw he refused, but she did not try hard enough. Has she even apologized? Another commenter added, bet she kept the $10 too. As for the cousin what in jerk, obviously it runs in the family. OP, I guess you have to go over and explain the collection wasn't hers to give or sell. How snotty you have to get depends on what they do about it, I guess. Also, most likely you'll have to give that snotty kid $10. Edited to say you will probably have to take your GF to small claims court since she doesn't want to embarrass herself. Another commenter said, please update with the decision you made. OP replied, Defo contacting the police because apparently I'm a man child with ego problems who just wants to humiliate his GF in front of her family members. Like what? Another commenter suggested, 
no, you shouldn't sue your girlfriend. It seems like you are ready to break up over this. Just insist on getting your cards back. Talk to the cousins slash their parents directly if you have to. That's a better option than paying thousands of dollars for the court to intervene. One more commenter said, please upvote this. Court is not cheap, and that better be the most impressive hoard of cards ever, or you're never gonna get anywhere near the value of the cards just to see a lawyer and have him tell you there's no way you'll get this to court. OP replied, they are worth 55.5K in terms of today's value, and more importantly, they have sentimental value to me and I'm pretty sure that's something. One other commentator suggested this is something the police would be able to handle, so there is no need for any court. So first, I will try that, and hopefully I get them back. Thank you for mentioning how expensive that could be, so I'll def keep it as a last resort. OP also added, the small claims court can only award me up to $1,000, equivalent to my currency, which is not the monetary value of the cards. There is also sentimental value, which is worth way more. My sister is a lawyer, and she said, since the monetary value is huge, the police will get involved and treat it as a serious matter. I have given her time to think about it, but if she doesn't do anything, I'll go and file an FIR against her and the cousin since I won't have any other option at that point. Now for the two month update. Holy shoot. Never thought this is how 2021 would end. A lot has happened since my first post. First, thank you for the support, some tips, and good luck. I'll start by clearing some assumptions. In my original post, I said, though I love her a lot, I believe I would rather have my cards. This statement alone pissed some of you, so let me elaborate on that. My first ever 300 cards were from my father's collection. He died of hepatitis C. He was quite into gaming. My mom kept his cards for years and gave them to me when I was in my early teens, and I got hooked. I grew the collection to 5,000 cards. There was immense sentimental value attached to those cards. After my GF refused to talk to the cousin, he refusing to give me the cards when I asked, his parents being jerks to me, I took the legal route, filed an FIR. Initially, I had trouble since the police didn't care about some cards, but my sister, who is a lawyer, she is about to become a lawyer, told the police the estimated value and they got interested. We told the police five to 5.5K value of the cards. Things took time, but the police eventually confiscated the cards, 4987, and got them appraised by a company. They came back with a value of approximately $6,000. I told the police the missing cards were also of substantial value since they were very old, son of which sold the one my father left behind. Cousin told us who he sold to, and those people gave the cards back with no problems. Right now, the police have all the cards. The cousin who I knew had his eyes on my cards threw my GF under the bus. I know this because he wanted to buy those from me in the past, but I refused. He told the police he bought those in good faith. My GF also tried lying to the police, but since I had her on recording, she got into even more trouble. She got charged with grand larceny and also fined for lying to the police. I should get the cards by the end of this month or by early January. The police just said they need to finalize and file some reports and then I can have them. As for proof of all this, I had the cards photos front and back along with some receipts. Some of you were also saying that I should take this to small claim court. This amount is too big for that, at least where I am. Now for a few important comments. A commenter said, probably time to quit referring to her as your girlfriend. OP replied, shoot, I'm so used to it, I didn't even realize. Another commenter asked, do elaborate, please. OP explained, when the police went to confiscate the cards, I and my sister were with them. They got them, left, and we just stood there and his mother slapped the shoot out of him. I don't condone violence, but I won't say I feel bad for him. Another commenter asked, wait, I thought they were being jerks to you. Why was she upset with him? OP replied, they were jerk with me in the start when the police weren't involved. I asked them first nicely. They were jerks. I went to the police. So when the police went and confiscated the cards, after that, the mom was slapping her kid. Another commenter asked, do you think it's that she didn't believe her kid could do such a thing and she's slapping him because it got proven? Or is she slapping him for making the parents have to deal with the law? 
OP replied, I honestly think it's because the police came to their house with their sirens on and all the neighbors came out, so the embarrassment would have been unreal and she was probably taking that anger out on him. What did your girlfriend say about all this? Has she apologized? The cousin will receive any sanction? How long will your girlfriend spend in jail? Has anyone in her family said something? Will you keep updating this? I hope so. She honestly said a lot of stuff like, how I am prioritizing cards over a human. I'm choosing things over my GF so I'm objectifying her, which makes me a misogynist. And she hopes I never get intimacy or a partner and I die miserably. She said all kinds of wild stuff and no, she hasn't apologized. The cousin got nothing. He and his parents lied, and my sister said not to say anything since we were getting what we wanted, which is the cards. I don't know what else to update. I should get my cards soon.